Welcome back to Kitchen Table Electronics Repair with UXW Bill. Now this is part two of the realistic TM152 AM and AM stereo tuner repair. For those of you who have been following along, you know the whole story. But for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time to hear about this, basically what's going on here, I was sent this AM stereo tuner, manufactured and marketed by... Uh, well, maybe not manufactured, but at least marketed by Radio Shack and sold under their realistic name. This is an AM stereo tuner that is capable of tuning in broadcasts that are made using the Motorola CQAM for Quadrature Amplitude Modulation system. And this was sent to me by YouTube user VWestLife, who had been using it with an alternative QAM decoder as opposed to the built-in Motorola MC13020P chip. And something happened when he was doing that and something got fried. Well, as it turned out, what got fried was the Sanyo LA1245 electronic AM tuner that is supposed to fit in that socket. Now, I installed that socket the last time, and it turned out to be a very good move on my part because the replacement chip that I bought on eBay was just as bad as the first one. So I ended up borrowing the chip out of this Medusi Pro 1K high fidelity wideband AM stereo tuner which uses the same LA1245 and I put it in the realistic tuner and it more or less came to life but I was never getting any audio out of it. And I think that I have discovered the reason why. You see, there's something funny going on here and I'm going to show it to you. Inside this unit there's a test point right here, this little spike right here, which is marked TP1. And sitting right next to TP1 is a wire shunt marked J10. And as you can see, J10 is definitely not connected. And the funny thing about J10 that I didn't realize at first is that there are actually quite a few J10s inside the unit. There's two of them back there, as a matter of fact. Both of them labeled the same thing, which is really interesting work on the part of the... Uh, printed circuit board artwork designer, the person who did that. Anyway, at first I thought, you know, that's got to be some kind of a test point and normally shouldn't be connected. Well, it turns out I'm wrong. I believe that takes the uh, 450 kilohertz intermediate frequency and delivers it to the Motorola QAM decoder for further processing and eventual output to the audio, the line level audio outputs on this thing. So one of the first things that I'm going to do tonight, and I'm really going to get busy with this tuner, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that jumper back together. Well, that's kind of an ugly job, but that should have it hooked back up satisfactorily. Then I'm going to borrow the LA1245 out of that hunk of junk again, put it in this thing, go find myself an audio amplifier and a speaker, and see what kind of trouble I can get into, see if this thing is actually outputting audio proper now, as I expect it will be. So there's the borrowed LA1245 the reconnected trace, and I'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with the audio outputs later, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm only going to have output from one channel, the uh, left channel, so hopefully that will do for the, for the demonstration. It should be fine for a test. But like I say, more about that later. All right, I got my speaker back, just one. Couldn't find the little realistic amplifier. I think some helpful person moved it, so I've got the T-amp, Got the talking house all primed up and almost ready to go as soon as it finishes its little calibration routine. And I've got the TM-152 laying here upside down. You know, while I'm at it, I might as well turn that poor thing over. Make sure these two wires over here aren't going to touch and short anything out or possibly make my life just that, more that much more interesting than it already is. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what we get now I've hooked that jumper back up again have tweeting of some kind. Well, that sounds like a working AM tuner to me. Let's go down to where I'm transmitting at. Sounds pretty good, although my tuning must not be quite right. There we go. Well, 
brother about your daddy and your mother and your crazy ex-lover. We talk about your friends and the places that you've been. We talk about your skin and the dimples on your chin. The pop All right, so the connection between the LA1245 electronic tuner and the Motorola Quam decoder has been restored, and that has brought this tuner basically fully back to life. But there's still a couple other things that need to be taken care of. One of the things that was done to this tuner before I came to have it was the audio circuitry in the tuner itself was bypassed and the audio output coming off of the Quam decoder was run directly to the line level outputs. Now I'm not totally sure why this was done, but my guess is that it had something to do with improving audio quality. Well this was done just by uh, putting a wire over here in uh, one of these through holes on the board and then running it over to the appropriate channel. Well, when I got this thing, both of the uh, RCA jacks were hooked up. <laughs> when I took it apart, I don't think the wires had ever been uh, soldered to the board or they weren't soldered very well or something like that. And one of them, the one of them for the right channel, basically pulled out and I had it for a while, but it went off to points unknown and I have no idea where it is now. So what I have to do now, because the uh, yellow wire here is not too terribly far behind its uh, partner, I'm going to have to resolder it to the board and I think I'll just go ahead and leave this modification in place mainly because I'm lazy and don't feel like cleaning out those through holes where the resistors were and restoring the original audio wiring or reconnecting these little stubs to the uh, places on the circuit board where they're supposed to be connected. So what I have here is a small roll of some fine gauge hookup wire that is um, a solid core as opposed to a stranded core because that should be a little bit easier to deal with here and uh, this, this one wasn't soldered going over to the left audio output, so I'm going to go ahead and solder it on there and then repair this connection over here to the right channel audio output. And so the work continues. I've managed to reconnect the audio outputs, cleaned up the routing of the wire a little bit, and they should now be working quite well. Soldered pretty nicely to that. I wouldn't say perfectly, but good enough. And I also managed to solder them down to the board, although this one I need to trim up a little bit because it's just a wee bit on the long side. Alright, so with the majority of the electronic restoration done, there's really only a couple things left to take care of. And those things would be, first we'll take a look at the cabinet here. As you can see, the cabinet has screws that go into the bottom of it to hold the chassis in place. There are a total of four of them. And the problem here is that the screws originally had some kind of little rubber feet that fit around the edges and unfortunately those feet more or less decomposed into either a gooey or dried out rubbery flaky mess. So there's no sense in trying to put those feet back on. Now I suppose you could probably order feet like that online but I'll tell you what I've got here. I have some of these things from the Waxman consumer group, the do-it-yourself people for sure, and these are non-skid gripper pads with soft touch. Now what I ordinarily use these things for, these things ordinarily make great replacement feet for Dell computers like the Metal Case or the Mitac series like the Dimension 2350, the 2300, 2400, 4600, 4700 and the Optiplex 170 tower. But I think they can also be used in this application if I were to take an X-Acto knife and carefully cut out the center and then do a little concentric cut in there that's just a little bit wider out to allow the screw head to snug up, thusly keeping it from scratching the furniture. So I would think I could take one of those and do something like that and then just hollow out the middle of it with an X-Acto knife or stab it with a screwdriver or something and then I would have replacement feet for the tuner. So that's how I intend to solve that problem. Now the other problem, the dial light in this tuner is burned out and V West Life left the uh, burnt out light in place for me as a template, but the wires were cut to it, so it's a little grain of sand bulb that fits up in here behind the front panel. And at first I was hoping, you know, hope I don't have to take the front panel off to uh, disassemble, uh, take the front panel off. I hope I don't have to unstring the dial cord to take the front panel off, but I, di I don't think that's necessary. And in fact, I took this off once as a test run already, and the only trouble I had was the tuning knob was on there very, very tight. And I suggest that if you do the same thing to your TM-152, or even the AM-FM TM-150, which is probably much the same setup, that you not 
uh, apply any force to this with instruments that are going to leave marks on the front panel because they will mar the front panel and in fact I did mar it just a little tiny bit before I got wise and switched to something else but that knob was pressed on there very tightly which is why I haven't pressed it all the way back down anyway I could just put another light in there that would be the simple thing to do there's a tap coming off of the transformer that runs at about six and a half volts for the light but I've got a better idea why not set this up so I would practically never have to come in here and do this ever again my idea is to use a white LED which I have right here hello instead of <laughs> you like that fur head instead of using the failure prone after so many years grain of sand light bulb and in order to do this I'll need a couple of things first of all I'll need some kind of a rectifier here I have a little rectifier diode right here to uh, take that AC voltage coming off of the transformer and convert it to DC to happily feed the LED and then I have some resistors. These are, these are overkill, but they're the only appropriate resistors that Radio Shack had. So they were, it was either do that or do without. But basically what I'll do is I'll take my hookup wire and I'll join it to these, splice the diode in, uh, hook up the resistor as well. Then I'll mount the LED behind the panel. Hopefully there's enough room for it. If not, I guess it and my hot glue gun are going to become friendly with one another. And then I should have a dial light once again for this little tuner. That's what a TM152 looks like with the uh, front plate off of it and the tuning knob removed. This right here, and then the tuning knob is back here. Now both of these are made of plastic, so you probably want to store them well away from your soldering iron in case any unfortunate accident were to happen, because you could certainly mar them. But right there is a little grain of sand light bulb that has long since expired in this little tuner. And I think there's probably just enough room to get that LED in there. It's going to be a bit of a tight fit, and I'll probably need some heat shrink tubing in order to keep it from shorting out, but it should definitely be doable. Okay, there's the LED, and here is the newly installed wiring. These two leads are going off to the LED. One of them goes over here and is simply joined to this one and then the other one goes through the little rectifier diode and the dropping resistor so all that's left now is to go ahead and run those around to where they can join up in this front panel and then I can mount the LED in there now that's a metal housing and in order to keep it from shorting out I'm going to do much the same thing the uh, makers of the original bulb did and that is to say I have a piece of small heat shrink tubing here and when I've got my leads connected to the LED, and I have tested to verify that I've got the polarity of the LED correct, of course, I will go ahead and heat shrink that tubing, and then I will mount the LED in the little metal housing over there and put the front back on the tuner. And there it is, one very pretty little white LED just happily glowing along, so I'll go ahead and solder that all up and put it all together. Well, it's not as pretty as I'd have hoped it would be, but it is there, and it does look like it should work well enough. So put the front cover back on this thing and just see what it looks like. And now, here's the demonstration with the front panel back in place of the newly installed dial lighting. Not the most even light you ever saw, but it's only coming from one side, and I wasn't feeling industrious enough to try and put LEDs on both sides. Uh, certainly better than nothing at all. And here's the exploration of this theory. I did something simpler than I thought I was going to do initially. I just took the old uh, screwdriver here, poked a hole through one of these, and drove the screw in far enough that it's not directly touching the ground. And I could still scratch a surface somehow if you weren't careful with it. But I think it'll do, and I'll just have to reevaluate it a little bit if by some chance it would not. So now, I have to do three more of them. Okay, there are all the feet installed. Now, if you do this on your own TM-152, when you take the old rotten rubber feet off, and boy, these things are nasty, there's a little, uh, there's a little flat washer in here that you need to make sure to pull out as well. And I missed it on the first one that I did, but I went back and got it on all four of them. So, this tuner is basically road ready now. 
Unfortunately, it's rather late at night, and while I do all my best work at night, I simply can't be bothered to go over to the Roach Palace where I've got the stereo AM transmitter. So I'm going to call it quits for tonight, and I'll do another video in the future of this thing up and running in stereo mode. I've decided to go ahead and leave the LA-1245 in it. When I get my other one sorted out from eBay, I'll just pop it in here because I'm not going to junk this thing because it does have its uses, but any day of the week, I'm going to take the TM-152 over the Medusi Pro 1K. So thank you for watching, and there you have it. One completely repaired and restored tuner. On it. Good old Paul Simon. Song about conflict and ultimately conflict resolution. One. About, she wasn't there.